Howdy folks. So we're at the end, unfortunately, but I guarantee you that I will be doing regular Facebook Live uh, talks, conversations, tutorials, how-tos, just about anything you need. So stay tuned. But we're at day 22 on the 22 ways to automate your freelance business. And today I'm really excited since you've already implemented everything in the past 21 21 days today is all about how to handle your growth right you've done all of this setup building this foundation really setting yourself up for success so now it's now that you are growing how do you handle that growth all right so I want to just make sure that we've got everything going on here <clears throat> It's all working. Um, I know Facebook Live says you're live. We're building an event, an audience for you. So I want to make sure. Uh, ben, how's it going, Ben? Um, looks like uh, Margaret. Okay, so people are starting to come in. Good. I was worried a bit, little bit there for a second. Um, <laughs> so this is how you handle your growth, right? If you are growing your business or you're you had a huge an increase in revenue or an and or profits in 2016 give me a thumbs up i want to say congrats to you because you're working hard i know you are and i'd love to be able to give you guys a shout out um so whoops i see myself over here in the corner I'm just gonna close that out here um so Without further ado, let's just jump into this, right? So how do you handle your growth? You started building your business, you're getting a lot of work now, a lot of leads, um, support. You're doing all of these things that your business, you, you have to do to sustain your business. But now, what, how do you handle that, right? Um, it's all about how you handle your growth. You don't want to grow beyond your means, right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to look before you jump. And what I mean by that is, is making sure that anything that is in your business, any process that is in your business, whether that be sales, the actual work, billing, administrative work, support, implementation, and so on. The list goes on and on, even swabbing the floors, right? So you want to make sure that you do that first in your business manually, right? And then see how that goes, right? Is it some process that you can outline and define and maybe hand off to somebody else? But before you do that, I would try and encourage you to be able to see if you could build a system around that process, right? So I've talked a lot about processes and systems and process is the actual one, two, three steps in order to do something, right? And a system is a way that you can automate that process. So if you're doing sales and support and implementation, document all of those things. We talked about that in a previous video, but look at it from the perspective of before you hire somebody, because there's that responsibility that you have to that someone, right? To be able to pay them. And and oftentimes when you start growing, you think that you're always going to grow and you're always going to have that money. But <clears throat> I would definitely encourage you to really get that process ironclad, right? Make sure that you know all of the steps involved in the individual process before you go out and hire somebody. In fact, if you can use tools to automate some of that process even, right? It could be a total custom-based process, right? Like my sales is very custom, right? I have to talk to the client and that kind of thing. But how that client comes into me, usually a few emails go back and forth. I use my email platform to do that. Right, um, to set up an appointment instead of me doing back and forth emails to do that, I allow my email automation to do that. So, and I use a, a tool like Calendly that links into my uh, Google Calendar so that my availability is outlined easy for them. Right, so look to 
some type of tools to help you automate your process, right? Then once that's all nailed down and ironed out, then think about hiring somebody, okay? Second thing is you wanna project your growth, right? Especially if you've just started implementing some of these things, you're getting new leads in, right? That's usually the first thing. Once you start getting more leads in your sales, you're like, oh, okay, I gotta ramp up my sales. I gotta hire a sales team, right? Or you don't, you're not sure that that growth is gonna be increasing at the same rate over time. So take a look at it, project it, see what might happen, right? So if you can only handle a certain number of clients, let's say you can handle five or 10 clients at a time because it's just you, then okay, if we've ramped up the acceleration in building our leads, right? <clears throat> why don't we schedule out those leads, right? For consultations, see if they're a good fit, right? And schedule them out maybe once a month, every other week, whatever that might be, right? But start to try to figure out and project your growth. Because if you can't project your growth three, six, nine, 12 months out, then you can't really hire anybody, right? You can't hire somebody today. The worst thing that you can do is hire somebody today for an emergency that you have today. Because here's what happens. When you hire somebody, you bring them on, you hope they add to your business, right? And eventually they will. But initially they're going to take away from your business. You're going to have to train them. You're going to have to train them on the process. You're going to have to train them in whatever tasks that they're doing, how your business works, right? <clears throat> what the best practices you have for your clients. So that training takes time. So you can't hire somebody today and think that they're going to add value today. Okay. So project your growth. Make sure that you're growing at a steady rate before you hire somebody. <clears throat> and lastly, <clears throat> before I, my throat dries out here and just gonna take a sip of water, if, these, if, if you're thinking about hiring in, the, in 2017, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to be able to recognize that. <clears throat> wow, nobody's thinking about hiring. Wow, okay, so. <clears throat> Well, oh, okay. Philip, nice. Um, lastly, Philip, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more, maybe offline. If that's something, please reach out to me. I'd love to be able to uh, have a conversation about that. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is shopping sprees, right? When we experience growth, it's usually due to revenue right? I would encourage you to look at your profits, okay? Sock some of that profit away as working capital, right? And working capital is, is basically a, a, an account that your business has to do business. Now that can mean take clients out to dinner, that could mean reinvesting it into some education, um, it could mean buying some new equipment. That is working capital, okay? Don't go on shopping sprees though, right? So, you know, if you're, let's say you've gotten 10 grand more this month than you've ever had before in your life, right? So, and I'm just using 10 grand as an arbitrary figure, but, right, it's so awesome to see that number. You think, oh, you know what? I really need a new laptop, right? I want that new MacBook Pro, drop four grand on it, and then next month, Let's say you have a dip, right? Now you have these peaks and valleys here. You're not sure, you can't predict that growth, so you're not sure if that equipment was really necessary, okay? Um, don't go and buy these huge event, you know, monthly, um, what do they call them? Monthly subscriptions, right? So there's tons and tons of these mastermind. I mean, Seth Godin has a monthly mastermind and I think it's like, somewhere around five grand a month. I mean, it's insane. But if you all of a sudden get this good influx over let's say two, three months, and you're like, oh, you know what? This is gonna last forever. Make sure that it does before you drop a huge amount of money into something, okay? So you wanna handle your growth in a proper way, right? So as freelancers, you know, I know for me, especially, 
money burns a hole in my pocket, right? If I start growing, I'm like, oh, you know what? I do, I want that piece of software. I want that piece of equipment, right? I would encourage you to hold back a little bit, right? Make it almost difficult for you to use that money if you can, you know? Maybe put it into an account that takes a couple of days to transfer into an account that you can actually spend on, you know, something like that, right? So <clears throat> I would encourage you to handle your growth in a positive way so that you could build that sustainable business, right? And you can handle your growth by first doing everything yourself, then define that process, right? By defining that process, then you can systemize that process, right? And you wanna build in automation and things to help yourself before you go and hire somebody, okay? That will allow your growth to, you know, be responsible, okay? I mean, and by growth, I mean by adding somebody on because you have responsibilities to that person now that you've added on an employee. Secondly, projected growth. Don't just take a look at the last three months, right? Take those three months and scale that out to a year, at least nine months, and see if you could predict the growth over that time. And lastly, don't go on shopping sprees, please, right? I've heard many, many, how's it going, Emma? I've heard many, many freelancers horror stories that they go two years and they start getting clients and then they have to get a full-time job, right? And it sucks because if you're going and you get the ball rolling, right? It, you think that it's always gonna be there, right? You think uh, that, oh great, I got a, a $2,000 project this month, I got a $4,000 project next month, I got a $6,000 project next month, right? You think that growth is gonna keep continuing up on the upward trend, but there will be a lull, right? Make sure that you don't spend money before it's there, okay? So definitely stick to your budgets, be sustainable, Build that working capital in your business so that when you do have some discretionary funds that, okay, yeah, you know what? I, I've i made $25,000 over last month. My laptop is six years old. I think it's time for the upgrade, okay? So <clears throat> I would love to um, hear more about your growth, right? This These 22 ways, these 22 videos, I would love to hear in the comments what you've implemented, what's on the plate for you to implement, and be able to um, join in on the conversation and see your growth. And we can do that inside the Sustainable Freelancer Facebook group. Just by going to res.com slash Facebook, join in on that conversation, and um, I'd, I'd love to be able to hear your success stories. Um, I know Philip had a, a question. Let me see. Um, Philip asks, what if there are parts of the business that you're really bad at? Start with an external contractor. Um, yeah, you know, Phil, if you have to know what you're good at, right? I know I'm good at development, right? But that's what I center my entire business around. I don't do design work. I don't do SEO work, right? Um, <clears throat> So my business is centered around what I'm good at. Um, and there's some things, right? Like, so, you know, hire a tax guy if you need it or hire a billing person if you need it, right? Those kind of business processes that you, you know, that everybody needs, if you don't, definitely delegate that off, right? But when I talk about defining the systems in your business and defining the processes and then building the systems rather, you want to understand those parts, right? So like, you know, for example, you know, and I hate to say it, but you know, as a developer, these examples resonate with me is that, you know, I have a process that I take on new clients that I didn't build their sites on, right? I know that process by heart now because I've documented it, right? But there are parts of that I can easily automate or delegate to somebody else, but I've done that process. I don't like it. It's uh, a tedious job, mundane job, but it's something that I have to do. Um, theme development is also something that I have to do. Um, it's not something that I'm great at. I can do it, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the first few times manually, right? And then take a look at that process, develop the theme in the way that I want to, or develop the features in the way that I want to, and then delegate it off to somebody that has that skill set, okay? And then let them enhance that, okay? So I hope that was helpful. Um, <clears throat> Emma says, ah, yeah, I've had that happen to me in the past as well, Emma. Um, Emma says that I lost a client that wiped out half my income. It was awful. You become reliant on the income being there and forget it might not be there one day. 100% Emma. And the thing with it is, is that that happened to me too. Um, I had, and it, for a while, I had these what I called pillar clients that I worked every single day, got paid every day. They were retainer kind of clients, but they were a good portion of the income in my business. And I'm talking about like 60 to 80% of my business was this one client. Um, and that's what they say, like, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? And the thing is, if that client goes away, where's your business, right? So I would encourage you to figure out, Emma, if you can uh, diversify in some way, maybe even build a, a smaller product, you know, maybe a product based out of um, what, what it is that you're serving your clients. Um, even if it's like a $20 product or a $10 product, it's some sort of different revenue stream, right? Even if it's uh, consultations, right? Uh, you know, that's kind of like a low hanging fruit, right? People always want information. Just build a document at the end of the consultation and hand it off and say, here, this is what I think you should do. So think about other ways to kind of diversify your income so that that doesn't happen, right? Um, try to divvy it up so that every client of yours is a relative small slice of your business. You know, like, let's say, I mean, even if you have five clients, let's say, don't make any one client be more than 20 or 30 percent, right? So definitely think about that as you work through the next, you know, the next year. Um, okay. Yeah, so that was it. I hope that was helpful, everybody. Everybody, jump into the Sustainable Freelancer Facebook group. Let's talk about our growth. Um, <clears throat> awesome, Emma. Yeah, definitely small slice, lot, small slice clients now. I like it. Um, let's jump in that conversation and continue this. I'd love to hear you guys talk um, about your growth, um, kind of like almost like an accountability or a growth record, right? Um, inside of the Facebook group just to kind of ping things, ping ideas off of people. You know, what are you thinking about? Do you think that I should hire? Do you think I should do this, right? So, um, like Philip and Emma had a couple of questions there. You know, if anybody else has any questions, the Facebook group is where, where it's at, all right? So I definitely enjoyed this series. Um, I will be announcing a few more things coming along the lines. So um, until next time, your time to feast.